In this screencast, I want to talk about one of the most important problems in computing and in mathematics, and that is, does P equal NP? To get going, we, I want to give an overview of the problem, and then I'm going to, in this screencast, develop some of the machinery that we're going to need to understand the problem and some of its implications. So let's get started. Uh, first, I want to get some informal definitions here and just give you a big picture overview of the issue, of the problem. So with tractable is a word that's used a lot in computer scientists, science, and it's basically a synonym for easy, which is basically a synonym for something that can be done in polynomial time. Intractable, or hard, is something we know that requires at least exponential time. So P is going to stand for the set of problems that are easy to solve and for which it's easy to verify a proposed solution. So let's take a problem that we're familiar with, minimum spanning tree, and I'm going to phrase it a little bit differently. Does there exist, for some graph, a minimum spanning tree of length less than 100? It's easy to solve that problem. Uh, just run our minimum spanning tree algorithm, one of them, and get a minimum spanning tree and know that the spanning tree exists at its length less than 100. But, uh, and also, it's easy to verify a proposed solution, namely just add up the weights of the edges and see if they add up to be less than 100. Let's, but now, let's consider the set NP. That's a set of problems for which it's easy to verify a proposed solution for the problem. So, for example, if we talk, think about the traveling salesperson problem, it's easy to verify if there exists a traveling salesperson tour of a graph that's less than a length of 100. However, it's difficult to solve. We, at least we don't know how to solve it in polynomial time. So the traveling salesperson problem would be in NP, but right now we don't know whether or not it's in P because we don't have an efficient way of solving the traveling salesperson problem in answering the question for a great given graph, is there a tour of less than or equal to 100? So if you can stop and reflect upon it for a minute, it's pretty clear that P is a subset of NP. The problems that are both easy to solve and easy to verify obviously are just contained in the problems where it's easy to verify. And the big question is, does P equal NP? That is, if it's easy to verify a proposed solution, does that mean it's also easy to solve? So this slide just re-emphasizes that point. Um, here's a picture of our understanding right now. That right now we have problems that are easy to check, but they're hard to solve. Um, and we have problems that we're both, we know are both easy to check and easy to solve. But we don't, what we don't know is whether or not this is true. If P is equal to NP, then these sets are basically the same. Um, it could be that P is not equal to NP, in which we would have a picture, uh, not quite this picture, but it, once we knew that P is not equal to NP, then we'd have another picture where uh, there's some distinctions still to be made between the hard problems and the easier problems. So this slide is just to give you a basic idea of something we're going to study in more detail called problem reduction. And the idea is, can you take a problem that you know have a good efficient solution for and somehow use it to solve another problem and use it so you can solve that other problem also efficiently? So this is going to be, a, think of this as an algorithm or a black box that solves problem X. The idea is now, if this is problem Y over here that we're trying to solve and this is our algorithm, this algorithm just might consist of some simple steps, polynomial time, and then calls to uh, the problem solver for problem X. So in other words, we don't have to really do too much work over here to solve problem Y other than the calls to X. So in other words, if X can be solvable in polynomial time, then Y is going to be also be able to solvable in polynomial time. So this is a more formal definition, and this is the notation we're going to use. Y is reducible, polynomial reducibly to X. So a problem Y is polynomial reducible to a problem X 
if and only if y can be solved in a polynomial number of steps and using a polynomial number of calls to the algorithm that solves x. So right away, if you think about it, what does this imply? This implies that if uh, y is reducible to x, then if x can be solved in polynomial time, then y can also be solved in polynomial time. Okay, so in y, the proof of this is relatively straightforward. Just think about it as basically if you have a polynomial number of calls to x, that's just going to be, end up in being a multiplication of uh, the, that polynomial number of times times the polynomial for how long it takes to solve x. The next theorem is just the contrapositive. If y can't be solved in polynomial time, then x cannot be solved in polynomial time. And the proof is just by contradiction, or you can just say that it's the contrapositive if you're familiar with that. So again, the idea is, let's suppose that uh, f x could be solved in polynomial time. Then you know from this theorem that that means y could be solved in polynomial time. That would contradict um, the uh, that y cannot be solved in polynomial time. Therefore, x cannot be solved in polynomial time. If you've watched earlier screencasts or taken a course um, in algorithms, you probably may have seen this. Um, if we have a problem called bipartite matching where we have two sets, and we'll assume for this discussion the sets are the same size, and you want to match the things in this set on the left with the things on the right in a one-to-one -one and on-to way, well, how do you solve that problem? Well, if you know, know about network flows, it's easy. This problem can be reduced to network flows, namely introduce a source and a sink, draw some additional edges, and have all the edges in the graph flow from the, from the side of the source towards the side of the sink, and give them capacity one, and then run our max flow algorithm. We have our max flow algorithm, and so um, that will give us the answer by telling us whether the flow along these edges, which what flows along those edges, are actually one. So I claim this is polynomial reducible. Why? Because to take this graph and construct this graph, that can certainly be done in polynomial time. All you have to do is add two new vertices and a number of edges and change and add weights to each of the edges of one. So, and then call the network flow problem. And then once you get the network flow answer back with the xijs, which are the flows, you'll know which ones of these edges have flows on them and that will correspond to the matching. Now that we have problem reduction, the next little bit of machinery and setup that we need is to make a distinction between optimization and decision problems. The reason we're doing this is decision problems are a lot easier to handle from a theoretical perspective. So optimization problems are basically what you're used to, uh, they, what we've been doing all throughout the course, or typically what you do in any algorithms course. And for example, finding uh, a maximum of something. So find the length of a minimum spanning tree. Um, and in addition, we find uh, the solution. In other words, what values determine the max or min. That, that's typically an optimization problem. Decision problems are in some sense simpler and make the theory much easier to work through. And that is their answers to yes or no questions. So does there exist a spanning tree cross out the minimum span tree, of G that has length less than 100. Or you could have another decision problem with, is the length of the minimum spanning tree of G equal to 100? Now, both of these, these decision problems have yes or no answers. That's the, what the, sort of, what defines the decision problem. So now we're going to apply our concept of polynomial reducibility to a decision problem. So we're going to focus in on decision problems now. And so if there exists a function t that transforms instances of decision problem 1 to decision problem 2, then t and t preserves the answer to the decision problems, um, and t is computable in polynomial time, then we say that d1 is polynomial reducible to d2. Again, the same concept we were talking about earlier, but now it's restricted to decision problems. 
typically when we do the transformation, it's nowhere near as complicated as what I talked about earlier, where there might be multiple calls to D2. In uh, almost every case that we're going to talk about, it'll, a single call will provide the answer. To, a single call to D2 will provide the answer to D1 after some manipulation. So in this slide, I want to make the concept of tractable a little more rigorous. A problem is tractable if there is a polynomial time algorithm that solves it. And again, uh, just to go back to something said in some of the earlier screencasts, this distinction of tractable versus intractable um, is useful because for the most part, um, this means that algorithms that have are tractable and are therefore polynomial time run very quickly because few of them have higher degree polynomial order. And polynomial time is also independent of the computational model. So if you take in uh, language uh, theory, you know that there are lots of different computational models that we can use. And to a large extent, this definition is going to be independent of the kind of machine that you're executing your algorithm on. Possibilities for the problems now. Tractable. Proved by exhibiting a polynomial time algorithm. Intractable, proved that any algorithm takes at least exponential time. And to keep in mind that the world is uh, not always as friendly as you would like, there are problems that are undecidable, for which th there is no known algorithmic solution. For instance, something called the halting problem. If you're not familiar with that, uh, you might spend some afternoon uh, learning about it, it's actually pretty imp has some important implications for applications in computer science, like uh, finding out whether a program has infinite loops or not. So the big question is, does P equal NP? This is the millennial size prize problem. Um, a correct solution would result in a U.S. $1 million dollar prize. Um, it would also probably the $1 million prize would pale in comparison to some of the other things that you would likely be able to do if you were able to solve that problem. Briefly, I want to just emphasize that restricting our view to decision problems really is not a big uh, restriction at all. In fact, for most optimization problems, there is a decision problem that's basically equivalent so an optimization problem for a graph might be what is the minimum length of the Hamiltonian cycle for the graph? In other words, a traveling salesman problem. The decision problem is, is there a Hamiltonian cycle of length less than or equal to m in a given graph? And by appropriately using this, you can reduce the optimization problem to this. So in other words, if you could solve the decision problem in polynomial time, you'd also be able to solve the optimization problem. So, and that's, that's true for many, many problems. The decision problem is just more convenient, as I mentioned before, and, will, and helps, uh, not, by convenient I mean helps us prove um, lots of important results. So finally, most formally, P now is the class of decision problems that are solvable in polynomial time. Uh, this assumes the data is encoded in a reasonable way um, and by that I mean binary or some other multi-symbol encoding. You really don't need to worry about this. It's just the, it's the kind of encoding you're used to in working in computer science. And there are lots of examples of decision problems in searching. Is, is an element in a set unique? Um, is a graph connected? Is a graph acyclic? Um, is a given number prime? In the next screencast, I'm going to talk about NP-completeness, what that concept means, and what some of its implications are.